Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I repeat myself because prior to this, when I said good morning, I was, I had muted myself. And now I notice that I'm unmuted. So good morning once more and greetings from India. Now, this is our second webinar in our fourth series of Diabetes Challenge. This is the RAC, I'm sorry, that should have been Weight Loss Challenge. This is the RAC Weight Loss Challenge 24. And this is our second webinar in the OBFIT series. Obesity. The concentration of our webinar, as well as the weight loss challenge, is on obesity. And I took upon myself the responsibility of reading up on the current status of obesity around the world. Now, we know that obesity uh, is defined medically as a BMI of above uh, a BMI of above 30. Uh, in daily parlance, we would say if you are overweight or grossly overweight, you would be obese. Now, 39% of the children in the world globally, taking into consideration developed, developing, and underdeveloped countries, 39% of our children are overweight or obese. And this is more than the children who are malnourished and undernourished. About 40% of adults worldwide are obese. Obesity impacts almost every disease, mainly, well, to identify a few, the cardiac ailment, cancer, hypertension, diabetes, arthritis, and so on and so forth. And it is currently the fifth largest killer in the world individually, independently, the fifth largest killer. Five million people globally die directly as a consequence of obesity. 10 million die of hypertension, 7 million would die of smoking, and about 6 million would die of diabetes, which is another area of concentration for us. Coming closer to home, to the Middle East, our position is even worse. About 60% of our adults are overweight or obese. More than 30% of our children, more than 30% of our children are obese. 35% of men and about 27% of females are again obese. And the reasons, broadly speaking, two reasons seem to stand out. 70% of our population in the Middle East and the UAE seem to have a, a pesha or a desire or a habit of eating fast foods or commercial foods often, and often is described as more than three to four times a week. And trust me, I live in the Middle East, it is much more than three to four times a week. And 80% of our population does not exercise at all. And therefore, we started the weight loss challenge about four years back. And today, we have a participation of 
more than 18,000 individuals. 3,000 are children. 85% of these participants, the adults, are overweight or obese with a BMI of above 30. And of our 3,000 children, all school children, young, bubbly, enthusiastic humans, children going to school, 72% are overweight. This is indeed a serious problem. And we at RAC hospitals are looking at several ways to try and manage this, one of which is our webinar. And today, speaking to you will be a veteran speaker, a veteran speaker, the head of dietetics or the head of the dietary department in RAC Hospital, none other than Ruba, Ms. Ruba al Horoni. Besides dietetics as a therapeutic professional, Ruba is a health coach. And health means keeping you healthy. Therapeutic would mean dealing with you when you are sick. From a therapeutic perspective, Ruba deals with patients with cardiovascular problems, hyperlipidemia, high blood pressure, diabetes, post-surgery. And from a health perspective, weight management, health counseling, sports management, and so on and so forth. She covers the entire spectrum of human existence. Pediatrics, adults, geriatrics, pregnant and lactate lactating female, females within the community. And all this is done very professionally. She is a member of the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, the Arabus Nutrition Association, the Emirates Medical Association, Espen, Aspen, so on and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, our topic today is preparing your plate or nutrition on your plate. And I leave you with Ruba. First of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks a lot again, Doctor, for the lovely introduction, as usual. And I'm very happy and delighted to be presenting uh, one of the most important topics that I actually keep on spreading awareness regarding the importance of it. Uh, not only for our health, also for well-being and for conveying it to our families, to our communities, uh, nutrition. As it plays a very important uh, role in uh, overall wellness and health. So let me share my, um, yes. So uh, if, uh, uh, initially, we need to understand the concept of a healthy diet and nutrition in order to convey it as a way to maintain our weight and maintain a healthy lifestyle in general. So um, briefly, I will be taking you over uh, the diet concepts, um, how to structure a plan for you based on my plate method and what to do to, not be, to be able to uh, maintain your weight or lose the weight if you are obese. And I'll give you a sample uh, that you can build later on, uh, on your own. And um, as we have uh, highlighted earlier in the beginning uh, about the importance or, and the factors of being obese or overweight, again, I will just highlight uh, uh, the obesity and let me define it as a chronic disease that uh, currently um, started affecting our health and increasing the disease rates and making it very difficult or complicating the other uh, factors 
that uh, makes us uh, makes it hard on us to deal with it uh, later on and eventually it will um, it will end up in very bad outcomes uh, so obesity uh, we can consider it uh, uh, when the person weight is over uh, the limit towards his uh, height um, uh, categorized by um, let's say a method called BMI, when the BMI index falls above 30%, then um, we can consider a person that is obese. Below that, between 25 and 29.9, we can consider the person as overweight. Now, overweight, it's not very far away from being obese. Obese is not being far away from being morbid obese. It's just a matter of how it progress later on a hunt, and how you control it. And there is so many evidence uh, that confirmed um, that uh, and be, uh, to be able to, um, let's say, manage your weight, uh, there should be multiple approaches along with that, including physical activity, psychological uh, support, and so many other programs that uh, support, um, support the outcome and support becoming healthier later on. Uh, as a consequence of being obese, it's not going to only affect our blood sugar or cholesterol uh, and other chronic disease that may develop later on. You know that uh, obesity itself can affect us, um, it can give us uh, uh, multiple uh, joint pains, uh, migraine, multiple headaches, it can uh, disturb our sleep. A person may not be able to um, uh, digest food as uh, should as he should, and the vitamin uh, deficiencies actually the rate will be increased with obesity, not only with being underweight. So at the end, uh, the consequences of being obese is more than what you expect. It can actually diminish your overall quality of life. Yes. And it can include uh, so many other uh, consequences. It can affect your emotions. It can uh, lead you to fall into de uh, depression. And then uh, the way you are communicating with others and, and socialize, it's also kinda, can be affected. So it's in your hand. And what, usually when we start the diet or when we hear uh, the word diet, it, it comes in, the first thing that comes in our mind is restriction of the calories, depriving, depriving ourselves from so many foods. And then you start craving when you restrict yourself to up to certain level when it is um, uh, not designed specifically for your needs, when you are not fulfilling your needs by a proper healthy plan, then you start craving things and then you start feeling really bad about yourself. And then again, you might lose the over control. Again, you will fall into the cycle back again when you start giving up and then you start eating more and more. So how we can be able to do that? Of course, Diets, um, when you stand behind the, fr uh, the phrase itself, uh, you need to be able to know that dieting, it's different than eating plan, different than healthy uh, lifestyle in general. When we use the term itself, diet, it comes, first thing comes in our mind that we need to restrict our calories. Uh, the concept is basically that we need to understand what is uh, the, uh, what is our body needs. Then we can start working on that and structure a healthy approach, healthier diet or lifestyle uh, that is suitable for our self that will not let us fall back into that trap and makes uh, make us give up at any point. And once you start seeing the results, you can actually um, help yourself by at least not coming back to the point where you started. So you have to ask yourself, what are the good foods? 
what are the healthy food let's say uh, what is the portion size what what does my body need how can i stop craving uh, these things you have to question yourself why from the first beginning you started feeling like this you know it's basically deficiencies. When your body is deficient of certain nutrients and certain needs, of course, you're going to start to have cravings because the body usually gives us alarm for anything that we neglect earlier and we confuse with other things. That's why you have to understand your body needs and how to structure a healthy uh, diet or a healthy eating plan. And remember, the diet fails you. You do not fail the diet. So you have to break that cycle by changing first your mindset and then setting realistic goals that I need to become healthy. I need to overcome uh, any situation, including obesity, including if you're having a high elevated blood sugar. So you have to set your goals to know and keep it in front of you to uh, remind yourself about why you have started this in the beginning. And take it easy. Always don't harm yourself. Take your time and rely on experts. You can take opinions, advices. This is very important, the support system around you. When you track yourself and you start writing the goals, then you start writing also after that your uh, diary, whatever uh, whatever you have taken, uh, like try planning your food and try to mention uh, what is the portion that you had, what did you feel about it? And when you reread it, you will realize a lot of things. Maybe you will overeat, maybe you will uh, eat less when you have uh, uh, gone, undergone certain situation. So this enlightens you for uh, um, a change in the way that you were uh, thinking and dealing with the food and the diet itself. And you have to ask yourself in the beginning, what what drives me to uh, eat this kind of food? Do, am I actually hungry or I'm just bored? Uh, uh, is there anything that is aggravating my appetite, affecting my appetite? Do I have a poor appetite? Am I forcing myself to eat? Um, as well as um, you have to take yourself out of the box of the cultural food and you have to start uh, trying healthier options cooking rather than falling into the routine where you actually try yourself to get out of it by eating unhealthier options try to be creative in your food customize your food and then make yourself always uh, fall in the love what you eat adjust the meal plan towards what uh, your fa favorite, uh, let's say, additives, and make sure that it is nutrient dense. Don't worry about the calorie as much as worrying about the uh, nutrients inside it, because you can eat two things, the same calories, but one doesn't have any benefit, which we call calorie deficit, or you can um, uh, nutrient deficit or you can also have the same amount but it's nutrient dense like comparing an apple with a bar of chocolate with both with having 60 calories it's the same concept so this is very important and the concept of healthy eating or healthy meal plan and physical activity actually decrease the risk for many health conditions so when you start eating healthier the consequences of obesity and other uh, and developing other chronic diseases starts to uh, decrease. Um, you will start avoiding falling into the genetic uh, or hereditary uh, uh, part of the family if you are already having family history of diabetes or heart diseases. This is a protection and as earlier you start, the earlier you prevent, the earlier the outcomes you start creating a healthier life that it will prolong help you later on. You will start seeing the good benefits on that, your sleeping habits, um, you will feel lighter, you will, in, you will be healthier. And uh, the calorie wise, of course, each and different person, they have a different needs. I cannot... 
um, uh, I cannot take what or consume the same calories as if I am an adult as the same as the child needs. Usually it is um, uh, depending on the age, on the physical activity, uh, on the gender and so many other factors. But practically, let's say overall, an a healthy adult that is uh, that uh, his age between 19 and 30 will require calories between 2000 and 2400 calorie but this is plus and minus if they are active not active their muscle mass fat mass and so many other factors um and uh, based on the calorie uh, advice uh, starting 20 and uh, 2010, um, we created um, a healthier method or let's say more simple uh, method to make it easier for the uh, community to understand how to um, uh, balance their meals and how to uh, plan their meal based on their caloric needs. So uh, it came to um, uh, a, a creation of a healthy my plate. It's a method that explains very briefly what all are the uh, that let's say the components that should be on each main meal and throughout the day to to call it a balanced meal to call it a healthy diet, you should not skip or forget any of the other food groups that creates or um, contribute to your energy levels, the macros and the micros, macronutrients, which you require on a specific amount uh, that you have to cover on a daily basis. Otherwise, if you eat less, you are nutrient deficit. If you eat more, then you are over uh, uh, taking over than your needs from the calorie then you start gaining weight if it is unbalanced specifically between the carbohydrates and proteins and fats then comes the ma micronutrients where uh, the vitamins and uh, minerals take over and it also specific uh, it specifies in uh, different proportions different quantities regarding also the other factors that i've mentioned earlier my plate method acts actually helped to visualize how to uh, um, uh, base the meal choices, how to combine the different food groups, how to control the unhealthy options, and of course emphasized on the importance of the meal in combination with physical activity. So when you follow this method, it will uh, not only help you balance the calories, it will uh, make you um, uh, understand uh, and make sure uh, that you fulfill your needs with all different food groups and uh, makes you uh, choose less of the unhealthy food. And it focuses and explains on the importance of adding fiber, fruits, vegetables. So um, basically it is uh, splitting the plate into fourth food groups, including the protein to focus more on the lean protein, which is very important in, and it has different critical um, uh, important uh, factors in uh, helping the body to build so many uh, important um, uh, things, uh, which I will explain later on. When you want to structure your plan, okay, make sure that daily basis, as I mentioned, at least four to five servings of fruits and vegetables, different colors, um, you should uh, replace the simple sugar in your food um, and the bad carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates with healthier options. Focus on eating healthy fat that actually helps in lowering the bad cholesterol and helps you to attain um, uh, satiety for longer time as fat usually takes longer time to be digested. So it should be part of your meals. Um, switch to healthier cooking methods and using minimal amount of oil and try to cut down sugar as much as possible and processed food, replace it with fiber rich food that will make you feel full for longer time and always make a healthier uh, choice between uh, high fat or dense uh, 
uh, food that is uh, high or dense in fat with lower uh, fat quantities. Each food group has specific health benefits. So let's imagine that this is your meal uh, at a time. Uh, usually the calories are split throughout the day, not by meal. When you have um, needs of covering 1800 calories, it doesn't mean that I have to consume everything on one meal. The better, yeah, when you, uh, the better it is when you spread it throughout the day, it will help you. Not to over, when you over it, it will uh, uh, end up in some digestive uh, problems. And also the body will not be able to um, have the same metabolic rate and have to burn the calories the same way. So uh, practically saying, uh, you should be having three meals, main meals, which are the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks. It depends on your activities and uh, your daily work routine and your caloric needs. It should be between the meals. So on a proper uh, combi uh, combined, let's say, balanced meal, there should be at least quarter of that from starch, mm -hmm. and then quarter should be protein, about 30 grams, and then half of vegetables, water, hydration on throughout the day is also not to be neglected. The needs based on uh, medical conditions can vary as well. And make sure that the first thing that you, you start with is water early in the morning and throughout the day. Uh, falling below your needs, taking less than what your body requires, it may lead to dehydration. And believe it or not, being dehydrated actually affects so many things in the body, starting with weight. And actually, it can create imbalance in electrolytes that may lead to fluid retention that affects your weight again. It can lead to digestive problems like constipation and so many other effects. Our bodies Ruba, composed Ruba. of 50. Yes. Ruba, one second, please. Uh, many people are, are saying there is no voice, but we can hear loud and clear. So please uh, check your systems. Uh, voice is absolutely clear. There is no audio problem. Please check okay. your systems. Thank sure. you. So you're you not can. able to see the screen? No, no. We, we are able to see everything. Audio, video is completely clear. Some of the participants are asking, so I'm just uh, mentioning that. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Carry on. Okay. So second of all is um, the protein. And we need to understand that protein is very critical and it helps in, uh, it's the key to every cell and antibody and enzyme, which is critical and a component in uh, forming the muscles and transporting oxygen and nutrients in and out. And it helps in developing, repairing the bones, the skin, and it's very vital for the human being. And uh, people usually are undertaking um, below the, they are taking below their needs from protein that eventually when they start gaining weight, their metabolism will fall uh, in the lower rate because their muscle mass will be less as they are not uh, providing enough protein for the muscle to be preserved or to gain it. And the, the amount of protein varies between adults and their activities. And it may also vary when people are sick or under any uh, critical condition or the after surgeries. So this can be divided and this can be uh, actually uh, decided by a health professional, but usually, if your, uh, your intake, at least um, on the three meals, is there, uh, which is around quarter or 30 grams of the meal, then you are good to go. And protein sources are not only from animal-based. When it comes to our mind, there is two types of protein where you can find from animal or plant-based, and then you have to do the proper combination because protein itself, it's composed of 20, usually 20 essential amino acids, 11 of that produced by the body and the other we obtain it from the food. And able to have a complete set, we need to do when we are consuming 
plant-based protein, we need to do the proper combination. This we can help you with, but usually when you combine a grain with a whole, with a whole grain, with um, um, a protein base, then you can get much, much more higher amount of protein, uh, uh, good quality protein. Um, the other, uh, the second most important uh, macronutrients that contribute to our um, health and energy is the carbohydrates that is fueling our body as we know. And following a very low carbohydrate diet is not going to help you with achieving uh, weight loss. Up to certain level, it's allowed, but again, you should be evaluated by an expert because again, it's the main source of energy in our body. Taking less or more of that, then you start seeing the effects. But you always need, you can uh, do and make a choice between type of carbohydrates. There is two types of carbohydrates, the simple sugar or the refined sugar, refined carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates which we usually tend to advise to make half of your intake during the day uh, from whole grain. What does it mean? It means if you are allowed to take around 50% from your total calories from carbohydrate, 25% has to be complex. That is, uh, in another word, full of fiber. Uh, some of the sample, uh, simple, um, uh, simple uh, uh, works of fiber, it will help in preventing constipation and uh, it will boost our immunity as it works as an antioxidant. It will uh, lower the risk of heart disease, cholesterol level, uh, improve the blood sugar, and also makes you feel full for longer time. That also will contribute to your weight management. Recommended intake is 20 to 30 grams in a day. Uh, the average is 12 grams per meal. So uh, a healthy adult, usually the women, they tend to have less, um, uh, 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 they should have less intake than men, but usually it depends also on other factors and their health condition. Uh, high sources of fiber includes the pulses, seeds, uh, whole grain products, as I mentioned, and a lot of vegetables, specifically like broccoli and all starchy vegetables. They contain good amount of fiber. So make sure on a daily basis you include it in your meals. Um, the third macronutrient is the fat, another word, lipids. And again, there is two types uh, of fat, the saturated and unsaturated, and it's very essential component of uh, uh, our diet as it, uh, it's very important for maintaining healthy skin and protecting our body organs, maintaining our body temperature, um, helps in uh, cell functioning and formation, and also in uh, absorbing the fat soluble vitamin. As you know, the vitamins usually there is water and fat soluble vitamins to be able to digest it and absorb it well from uh, the, vit the fat soluble vitamins, which are A, D, and A, K. We have to have up to certain amount of healthy fat in our diet. When we should avoid the unhealthy, which is the, satura uh, the saturated and tra trans fatty acids, as um, the intake of the unhealthy fat uh, contributes eventually to uh, heart diseases at it, as it's affecting the cholesterol levels and the fat and the adipose tissue and fat in the body itself. So this is just samples, real samples of how it should be uh, the meal type. Again, the, the portion sizes are, uh, the calories are uh, based on different uh, individual needs. And then the macronutrients or the amount or the serving sizes of the food is decided accordingly. So it can vary. This can be less or more depending on each um, uh, on each individual needs. But the proper combination should be uh, combining all food groups to be able to call it a balanced meal. 
following diets that are focusing on very low amount or high amount of certain macronutrients are not healthy in the longer run and should not be followed um, if uh, it is not advised for certain conditions. Um, based on your caloric needs, multiple, uh, let's say, food groups and serving size are decided. Uh, basically, if you are following or your needs are 1600 calories, then the 1600 calories will be divided um, into a specific serving size or portioning towards all food groups that includes fruits, vegetables, grains, meats, or let's say proteins, dairy, oils, and uh, again, portion sizes can be decided it's uh, internationally approved using the cups uh, standard um, you can um, refer to it anytime it's available everywhere as a resource and i can provide it later on uh, from different uh, food group uh, there is a serving size um, uh, let's say uh, referral uh, using the hands, the easiest method. You can um, refer to it by using cups, the measuring cups, or by hands. So a serving size of carbohydrates, a fruit, would be a fist, okay? A fist, and then uh, if it is a vegetables, if it is non-starchy vegetables, it's two handfuls. So when I say you need to have two servings of vegetables, it is two handfuls or one handful or and half a cup or a fist of cooked vegetables. Fruits as, as well, it's a fist. For, when it comes to dairy, it's either a cup or if it is a cheese, a quarter cup or two thumbs. And then if it is fat, it is uh, one thumb. Uh, when it comes to protein, like fish, chicken, and etc., it's a palm of the hand, okay? Only palm of the hand. This is what is called serving. So when you are designing your diet, and then um, we are advising you to have, let's say, three servings of fat, then you refer to the serving size of fat. When we say two fruits, then you receive, and then you... Um, Again, refer to uh, the portion sizes of uh, a fruit. A fruit, medium fruit, uh, it's equal to a fist like an apple. If it's a juice, it's half cup. It's not one full cup. Very important um, uh, factor or very important thing that you should be aware of when you are going to buy something that is actually, it's not fresh, good, like cereals or biscuits or something, and you want to evaluate the product with uh, uh, according to the calorie-wise so you can understand if it's suitable for you and it falls under your needs or no. There is usually something called a nutrition fact or label that you have to learn to read to be able to understand whether it's a good product or no, and then uh, you choose to consume it or not. So every, um, every product uh, has this card, uh, and it will tell you how much calories, how much fat, cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrate, and everything that is included. So first thing that you have to read is the serving size. So if you are buying a pack of cereals, it's, it's the serving size is out of, for example, the whole pack is 30 gram or 40 gram. So based on that, this is how much in the serving, not per the container. So this product, for example, if you can see with me, the serving size here is mentioned one cup, which is 228 grams. And the container has two servings. So if you contain the full container of this macaroni and cheese, uh, then it means that you have two servings. So you multiply whatever information here by two, okay? So let's say uh, after you start reading and uh, you are familiar, uh, familiar with the serving size, then you check the calories, check the amount of fat, sodium, and carbohydrates. Here the product has 31 grams of carbohydrates, zero fiber, and five sugar. So it means it doesn't have fiber. It's up to you. You want it, uh, you, you, will, you will consider taking it or not. It has more sugar and less fiber. So this is one of the factors that you should uh, highlight uh, the importance of it. Again, the sodium. Sodium levels, especially people with certain um, uh, 
uh, health conditions like hypertension or kidney problem they they should be uh, they should uh, uh, make it very important to know how much sodium and potassium in each um, food that they consume and basically we uh, as adults our needs falls around let's say 3000 milligram in a day of sodium um, and this product contains 470 milligram, which is around 20% of our daily needs, which is considered actually high. Uh, more than 15% is considered actually uh, high. If it is above 20%, that is very high. If it is 5% or less, then it's a good product. Fat is also very important to know how much uh, in there. And then vitamins and minerals, it will be there anyways. So if you are uh, looking for an, um, let's say, uh, if you are if you if you are anemic or your iron levels are usually less, and you're looking for fortified cereals uh, with iron, this is very important to know and read how much uh, iron, how much vitamins it's included. When you follow this concept, it will be a basic for a healthy lifestyle, healthy eating habits later on. It's not only about dieting for certain time. Try to lose the weight if you are obese. Try to get healthier and avoiding the complications of obesity and improving your health condition if you have any. And then you will be you will build the uh, uh, a healthier lifestyle later on. You will adapt to the new healthy um, uh, plan. Uh, you will feel better by organizing your meals every day. And eventually you will start losing the weight and then maintaining it after that. Uh, to be able to maintain the weight, you have to uh, lose weight gradually. Do not overdo it. If you have a very high body mass index, it is expected to lose higher than the people with less BMI, and this is normal. Usually, obese or morbid obese are advised to lose from 1 to 3 kg in a week and focusing or aiming on fat loss rather than just muscle loss and how to make sure that they are losing fat by following a healthy diet that is balanced with um, uh, with adequate protein, same time exercising. And then try to make sure also uh, that you um, continuously be active later on. Um, you can snack on things in between, but always choose to be healthy. Avoid unhealthy snacking, unnecessarily calories that actually uh, calorie dense, but nutrient deficit. Make sure that you are not skipping any meal because once you do, you will either overeat later on or less eat and then affect your muscle mass. So this is very important. And make sure you follow and um, the concept of my plating or balancing diet, um, don't force yourself if you feel full. You can finish your food later on, just spread it throughout the day. If you feel the food that is higher than your needs, then you can reconstructure your meals based on that by uh, lowering or increasing different food groups. And this is where we are here to help you in. Uh, this is just a sample of how you can uh, spread the day on a 1600 calorie to 1500 calorie. So if you are consuming three main meals and two snacks in between, approximately it's going to look like this. So the, as I said, the calorie will be distributed into portion sizes of different food groups and it will be distributed throughout the day. So two starch means two slices of bread or one uh, small... Um, loaf of bread or cup of, uh, let's say, um, uh, half a cup of cereals. Milk is one cup of milk. You have vegetables. The ser you can refer to the serving size that I mentioned earlier and so on. Simply build your plan. Enjoy eating food and always make healthier options. If you don't have any health conditions that requires you to restrict certain foods, enjoy the food. Cook it in a way that actually um, uh, makes you feel good about the food rather than hating what you are eating. Because this will 
surely positively impact your health and your diet plan. And if you feel that you are actually um, uh, need guidance, this is where we are here. Obesity is very important to be early detected and early uh, managed. Uh, there is no one approach for that. Always do a proper combination between exercising, weight loss, and if there is any underlying condition should be treated uh, um, initially. Try to uh, live in a healthier environment, uh, stress-free, always plan ahead, set your goals, um, uh, make sure that you are following the guides, make sure that you maintain the weight that you have lost by different strategies that I mentioned earlier. And thanks a lot. I'll be happy to answer you if you have any questions. Ruba. In my 50 years of listening to seminars, in my 50 years of listening to talks on nutrition and diet, I have to tell you that this was one of the most enlightening talks on nutrition that I have heard. Congratulations, that was outstanding and excellent. Thank you. I also must tell you that you had a few slides that were absolute winners, absolute winners. Your My Healthy Plate, in which your plate depicted the quantity of food that you had to have, a, a one-fourth size starch, a one-fourth size of protein and vegetables and fruits, and indicated with an indication of what is starch in terms of grain, what the vegetables and fruits are, the protein, your slide on protein sources, your slide on carbohydrates, complex and simple, your slide on fats, saturated, mono, monosaturated, polyunsaturated. These were nothing short of brilliant. They were brilliant. And what delights me more than what delights me more than anything is that here we are talking about diet and the message delivered is enjoy your food. This is such a fabulous interpretation of dieting. Ruba, I have to thank you very much for that, for the great learning in this session. Thank you very much and congratulations that was absolutely outstanding. Well done. Dr. Wilku, your question, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you, Ruba, for a wonderful session, like Professor said. I was wondering, uh, because this is the fourth time we are doing the webinars uh, for weight loss, and every time you have different uh, style of information uh, giving. So this time, uh, designing a plate, preparing a plate, I was wondering how you are going to present it. Wonderfully presented, wonderfully presented. Thank and uh, I have many questions which I will uh, try to combine because uh, in WhatsApp, I'm getting more, more of them. Uh, yeah, the first question is being asked by Sarfraj. For weight loss, it is advised to eat low calorie diet. Does it mean eating less? What is the small portion? The, is this uh, portion... And eating less, low calorie is a question which everyone asks during the weight loss. So you have already explained it. Let's just answer this question. Yes, I'll just uh, explain it in another way. Usually, as I mentioned, uh, our body has different needs. And then according to your needs, which is uh, designed for different individuals according to their needs, we after you decide uh, we decide that we give you a value let's say 50 percent 20 percent 30 percent and it falls to that there is a critical value if you go below that then it start affecting you uh, negatively usually as a diabetic patient or a patient who's obese we restrict carbohydrates but this, focusing more on simple sugar again it's a, one of the most important uh, macros that uh, fueling your body. Actually, if you 
lower it to a critical uh, amount or uh, restrict it, then it starts affecting the vitals, it's affecting your uh, functioning in the body, and then it will give you a, a diverse effect. So when you restrict, uh, when you lower the amount, what does it mean? It means that you were already taking higher than your needs or the proportion of the meal or my plate was incorrect. So eventually, once you lower the amount or restrict it to the amount that you should be taking, you will start losing weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a wonderful answer. Uh, see, there are uh, people who look for a quick fix. Like, uh, say, for an example, uh, I don't want to uh, mention this uh, like this, but Mr. Anant Kumar, uh, Bhatti is asking similar type of question which we could generally come across. Is there a way to boost the slow metabolism or best diet to lose weight faster? Um, as I mentioned, you have needs, right? If you are if you are obese, okay, we're not gonna give you the same amount of calories that uh, your body is um, requiring. Uh, we will uh, reduce 500 to 1,000 calories up to certain level. It depends on your weight. By that, when you will restrict, you will start losing weight. But deficient uh, diets or very restricted calorie that is very less, that it will not provide you with the basic needs, it's not good. Again, you will start having adverse effect. You will start maybe having disturbing your system. So... Uh, we will evaluate you, and according to that, we will give you a specific diet. And the proportion of the macronutrients, we can help you with deciding initially. But as a person, you need to look to yourself and decide, Do I um, act am I actually active? Uh, am I working behind the desk, sitting most of the day? Do I go exercise? How is my activity level? How is my hydration? And based on that, you can uh, decide on the goals and then uh, decide on the calorie or the diet that you need to follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good answer. Uh, third question is uh, asked by her Sahaj. My mother is, uh, mother's BMI is 30 and she has PCOD as well as hypothyroidism. Please suggest a diet to lose uh, weight. Generally, people, those who have PCOD and uh, thyromegaly, it's, it's very difficult for them to lose weight. And uh, they struggle very much to uh, attain a good uh, weight for that. Uh, Ruba, your suggestion, please. Majority with uh, people with uh, PCOS or uh, hypothyroidism, they have lower uh, metabolism. Uh, the same thing, they are uh, less sensitive to, uh, let's say they are, uh, uh, they have uh, insulin sensitivity. And this makes it very, um, not uh, difficult, but challenging to lose weight. But there is always weight and it, it depends on the body. Um, again, you can avoid simple sugar and refine the carbohydrates. Uh, for hypothyroidism, you have to be careful with a type of vegetables called cruciferous vegetables that interacts with the medication usually. And um, uh, again, uh, in general, you should be uh, focusing on um, organic food. Gluten should be avoided and lactose. Uh, certain uh, types of meat should be uh, avoided with PCOS. So these things you have to read about and follow precisely because a lot of uh, studies has uh, proved, uh, uh, emphasized on that. Yes? Yeah, yeah. That was a straight answer. Okay. Uh, I will take... Two other questions which I am receiving on my WhatsApp. One second, please. Okay. Yeah. This came across during the uh, participation uh, for the first day of being. And this is a very common question. People are looking into the uh, internet for more information uh, regarding the weight loss. And uh, when you search, keto diet uh, pops up the first choice. And people don't think uh, whether it is good or bad for them, and they start following. And many of the uh, this weight loss uh, management programs uh, prefer keto diet. 
I will not comment on it. Uh, you will be the best person to, as a dietitian, to comment on it. As a medical professional, I can. But uh, being a dietitian, you should be giving a proper answer. Keto is very popular form of dieting. Is it safe? Uh, even then, the, there there are many uh, feedbacks which are for and against in the internet. I am confused. The person the participant is asking. Actually, uh, keto diet. Um... Uh, keto diet eventually it's it came after paleo diet which is uh, uh, focusing on restricting the carbohydrate uh, to yeah. a very low amount and maybe most or majority of people when i come to ask them they are not following actually the same amount they are not they are thinking that they are doing keto but they are not doing they are just restricting the carbohydrate keto diet was invented initially to treat people with a plus b uh, yeah. certain health condition that uh, they require very high doses of fat. Keto diet, it means increasing the protein. With that, you are increasing the fat intake. What happened is when you are already not following any diet and suddenly you are not eating carbohydrates, you are eating more uh, protein, you will lose weight. Your blood sugar will go down. But the consequences of that, what will happen if on the longer run or more than a month, let's say, or after some time, you will start seeing a spike in the cholesterol level, especially if you have a family history, uric acid will go high and so many other uh, problems like kidney stones. This is consequences of a very high uh, protein and purine diet. And they are, sadly, um, they are not thinking about the consequences after following any such diet, because when you go search the internet, they don't speak about this, okay? Mm -hmm. And what is posted on the internet is not scientifically based. Most of the time, if it is not just a, an idea of certain people that they, po they post their experiences, but when you come to the concept uh, or when you come to the real uh, thing um, you have to make sure that it is scientifically based you have to understand is it suitable to my body or not because if you are obese and you have elevated cholesterol and you have a family history the blood cholesterol will spike up then you will end up on heart problem okay rather than following fat diets or any any trendy diet let's say think about Restricting your calories and taking your needs, fulfilling your needs, balancing your diet, and knowing the consequences of anything that you follow to avoid the complication out of it. Yeah, true. Uh, Ma'am, uh, there is one interesting question. Mm -hmm. Generally, a uh, participant from Abu Dhabi, she is asking, uh, generally, uh, you people say, you means all doctors and uh, dietitians, you say, eat a fruit, don't drink a juice. If I make juice myself, I will not add any sugar to it. Can I have it? We have explained many times. Uh, your answer, Ruba. Uh, did you, did, do you know why we say that? We usually, why do we advise juices uh, to be uh, repla uh, not replacing fruits? When you make a juice, Okay, okay. I said uh, earlier that half a cup is equivalent to one full fruit. To make, uh, this is for serving size, but it is not equivalent in Ooh. fiber and in sugar. When you make a juice, you will use two, three fruits, uh, comparing it to eating one fruit only. So it will be triple or double the calories, higher sugar, and you will lose the fiber. It's up to you. You can still have a juice. It will give you, it's a, it is comp composed of your daily uh, requirements and portion size, but the benefit on the nutrients will not be the same. Juice, the sugar in it, even if it is fresh, will be very quickly digested comparing to the fiber in fruits. You will feel hungry very quickly and you might exceed the amount that you should have taken. Yeah, true. Uh, Rupa, there is uh, one question again the, that I will take as uh, a last uh, because all, almost all the questions are similar. Uh, you spoke about uh, dairy products and uh, the question is coming, which dairy product we should be preferring? Uh, yogurt or what type of fat we should take? Okay. Uh, 
uh, dairy products varies in fat content and uh, of course it, it in its content in regard to the uh, vitamins and let's say comparing milk to yogurt and cheese cheese contains very high amount of fat then they all comparing to uh, milk and comparing to yogurt but of course we need to always look into the a lower fat side we need to make sure that we are not having anything like processed cheese this could not this is purely fat this is not this is like not even milk it's a milk substitute that you will not get anything else rather than fat but when it comes to yogurt comparing to both it has uh, the way it is being prepared and fermented there is higher uh, bacteria levels that is beneficial bacteria and healthier to the gut that will actually be digested in a very better and it's a best uh, for you uh, it will be digested in a better way it will uh, contribute to the microflora healthier microflora of the gut and will prevent uh, constipation and any gastritis later on Still, the same amount of protein will be there for each serving, one cup of yogurt comparing to one cup of milk to two spoons of cheese, it will give you eight grams of protein, but the fat will vary. And then again, the amount of bacteria and other benefits will vary. So make sure you focus more on the yogurt as uh, or Greek yogurt, as it has healthier bacteria that will help you in digestion and will make you feel full. Yeah, true. That was a straight answer and to the point. Uh, I think uh, I will wind up with the question, but uh, only one point I want to mention here. Many participants joined later on and they have missed it. So it's a, a common problem for many working people. Everyone, just please visit the website uh, www.rackweightlosschallenge.com. Under the webinar section, there is a webinar archive. You will find all the recordings of the previous uh, webinars. Even today, uh, webinars are being recorded. It will be uploaded uh, by tomorrow morning. So you can find all the recordings there. And if still uh, you have any issue, you can write a mail to support at uh, rackweightlosschallenge.com. Uh, from my side, uh, thank you. Professor, over to you. Ruba, thank you is what I've said before. And thank you is what I'm going to say again. Thank you very much. Those answers were brilliant. And uh, it, it, it correlates completely with your statement that the internet is not science. You're absolutely right. Uh, thank you for those lovely answers. Uh, the comparison of juice versus fruit, uh, the analysis of the keto diet. These were all brilliantly answered. Thank you so much. My Uba. pleasure. Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I would also like to thank uh, my colleagues in Rack Hospital, uh, the IT department, the administrative department, uh, uh, Arabian Wellness, uh, for conducting this program. I'd like to thank you all very much, Dr. Wilku, for putting it all together. Uh, most of all, I would like to thank our participants. We had 35 to 40 participants. Uh, th that talk was brilliant, and I hope you benefited from it. I hope you got the answers you want. We will be with you for the next, right up to uh, the World Obesity Day on the 4th of March. The World Obesity Day on the 4th of March will be with you till then. And we will have these webinars every two weeks. So until the next webinar then, thank you, goodbye, and have a great day.